As I promised, I said I would show a couple of the, well, what I ordered for Christmas. Um, I've got in, I ordered three kits. I got in two of them. Uh, the third one is, um, I'm not sure when I'll get it because it's a garage kit and they only make batches when they get enough orders and things like that. So I can't really say when that will come in. It will, but who knows when. So I'm going to go ahead and show the two other two kits that I did uh, order. Um, now I've been, they're ship kits and I've been wanting to build a ship for quite some, I've been aching to build a ship for a while and to build a warship. And I hemmed and hawed, I've looked at, there, there's so many kits out there to choose from. Of course, a lot of the new modern kits, since larger kits are like way out of my range, they're, you know, 100, 150, 200, 250 range, you know, which is just, you know, I was looking more in the uh, 25 to 35 range type stuff, and I almost went ahead and just picked up a couple of the older Vell kits or something like that, you know, but the more I thought about it, you know, there's a lot of cleanup involved in those anymore, and there's a lot of little parts, you know, hundreds of little pieces that need to be cleaned up. They're old kits. I built one when I was uh, quite young, I remember. Uh, I think it might have been, I don't know, maybe the Missouri or something. Uh, it was a glue bomb when I got through with it. It was hand-painted and glue all over it, and and I think that might have been what kind of scared me away from ships for all this time. But um, So I just did a little research and tried to find some kits that were modern, decent tooling, that had decent reviews, that uh, supposedly go together fairly well, they're well done, but still kind of in that price range. And then I just had to decide between a 1700 and a 1350. So I bought one of each size. And uh, the 1700 kit that I picked up is the uh, Flyhawks uh, Durflinger, and this is the commemorative edition. It was around 36 bucks I was able to snag it for, uh, which I think is a great deal considering what comes with this kit. Uh, now it's a waterline, um, and there's 271 parts to this thing, and they are small because I mean a 1700 scale 271 parts there's some tiny stuff in here uh, now it does come it comes with brass barrels it comes with uh, photo etch railing and ladders and stuff like that it comes with a uh, this commemorative edition comes also with a um, seaplane which has photo etch on it and all that too and so it's really uh, really quite an impressive kit now uh, all that was pretty scary to me because it's really small parts and dealing with photo etch and all that. And then I seen, once I got the kit and I'm looking at it, you know, looking at this beautiful picture on here, um, I realized that this thing must have hundreds of strands of rigging on it. And the stuff is, this, you know, the thickness of a spider web probably. Um, so, you know, that's something I didn't think about when I'm, you know, I'm buying this pre-World War, pre-World War I, really, ship. Um, is the amount of rigging that are on these things. And, uh, wow, you know. Ugh. It's going to be a while before I build this, but I want to show it. And what I'll do is I will go ahead on this video and just open the box and just show what's inside. I'm not going to do a, a sprue review or go through it in depth. I'll just take the parts out and show what comes with it real quick and the quality of the instructions and things like that. The other one I got, the 1350, uh, which actually turns out about the same length as this Durflinger when completed. Uh, the Durflinger is about, I don't know, somewhere between about 14, 15 inches in length. This kit builds out about the same, 16 inches or so in length, but it's a smaller ship, but yet in 350. Same amount of parts, about 270 something parts, I believe. And this is the Fine Molds, their first model. And this is the Ayanami. Fair amount of rigging on it, but nothing like that Durflinger. Um, now, this one doesn't come with any photo etch or anything like that. Um, I did go ahead and, uh, just the other night, I did go ahead and order just the railing, because I feel that's kind of a an important part to these ships, you know, is, is to have some scale railing on them. 
Uh, of course, there's all kind of stuff you can order barrels and and the the uh, magnetic uh, cabling and stuff that goes in the water and all that. But I think I'll just stick with the railing and some ladders and stuff. And, and you know, being a very novice shipbuilder, um, if I even make it through the uh, Durflinger, which I'll probably I would do first, if I even make it that far. But anyway, those are the two kits I picked up. They're both fairly new, modern well-reviewed, well-received, uh, they fit well, their parts are really nice, suppose, you know, so I figured that would be the way to go to just to avoid having to do just tons of cleanup and and all and, and then, you know, a lot of, a little bit of upgrading to kind of get things up to snuff, you know. Uh, go ahead and just start out with something that's pretty good quality and whatnot. And, you know, I got to blame a few guys on YouTube. Uh, couple people I've watched and like HPI guy and a couple others you know that have been showing ships and things like that and, and trying their first ships and all that so that's those guys are to blame for this is because this is crazy I mean this is gonna be really testing me for all that I'm capable of doing at this point so uh, we'll swing the camera down real quick, and I'll just real quick show the uh, just the contents of the of the dirt. There's that rigging I was talking about. I mean, oh my goodness, boy, have I, what have I got myself into? Okay, and you open the box. Instructions are pretty decent, and yeah, not much to them actually. Um, surprisingly, not a whole lot. Uh, you get a lead weight that goes in here. Uh, it's a real heavy piece of lead. Uh, which I guess is probably necessary because this thing is going to be pretty light when it's on the table and it'd be easy to fling it you know, across the table. Uh, there's some color coding and it's actually kind of, there's some complexity going on here. Obviously it'll take some studying and uh, reviewing to kind of get wrap my mind around exactly what I'm doing. Um, but I mean the actual, you know, heck the first page gets you all the way to um, you know, a lot of the ship already assembled by the time you get to this page. You know, this uh, third, what is it, third part here. So, uh, they cram a lot into each section. So, alright. And, uh, you know, everything's individually bagged. And in fact, all the stuff was inside of yet another bag in here. I took it out of the big bag. But, uh, the, uh, you're not going to be able to see it too well, but the engraving and everything um, is just top-notch. I mean, just amazing to me. Um, no flash whatsoever. Uh, and some just the tiniest parts. <laughs> uh, I actually ordered or bought a set of high-end tweezers just for building these kits. Because the older tweezers that I have... They're really bad about flinging parts out of them. Um, so I actually invested, I, I didn't realize what a good set of, uh, you know, a real good set of tweezers are going to do to help me here. Uh, and some of these holes in, in these parts are just, just so, I mean, laser small. But uh, quite impressive, quite impressive, i got to say. Uh, and then here's the uh, upper part and then the bottom. That's where the lead weight sits in. That's the inside of the bottom. Like I said, this is a water line. So I guess I will be having to build a diorama. Uh, here's the, the lead weight. Big heavy chunk of weight. Size to fit just in that bottom I showed. A few extra pieces here and there. There's the uh, stern. Part of the stern, I believe. Uh, more tiny little objects. And another section of deck. And, uh, I mean, just some of the molding is just as fine as, as hair. Now, here's a little extra thing they show. They added showing the weight going down in there. I watched another review, and I don't think the guy knew what this was. He thought it was like a, a business card. It's actually to show that that weight needs to go in there, and you need to do that in the very beginning. So, uh, like I said, you do get a sheet of photo etch. Um, and it's got all the railing, ladders, cranes, uh, some other little looks like parts of some guns maybe. Uh, really nicely done. The stuff is just hair thin. Uh, wow. I, yeah. 
Uh, a couple sets of decals. Uh, I guess this is the ship and some flags possibly. And this I believe might be for the little seaplane that comes extra. Uh, yeah, uh, here's the instructions for the seaplane. Oh, and it's got metal barrels in it as well. So, I mean, for the money, uh, it's, you know. But look at that. I mean, this shit, this plane is, is, is tiny. And then you look at these tiny little pieces of photo etch that go in it. You know, I may probably try to build this first and, and, it, and just to get used to uh, just handling this tiny photo etch and stuff, you know. Uh, of course, like I said, it's going to be a while before I start on this. And then you get the little, a little extra box that has the, um, it's got the, the seaplane, photo etch, the barrels, and there's the little barrels. That's how small they are. So that gives you an indication how small the, sh you know, the guns are actually on this 1700 scale. Uh, but overall, um, very quality, very nice, modern tooling. Uh, of course, this company, I believe, is known for its uh, uh, detailing parts and things like that. So, you know, it, I guess it's natural for them to put in a lot of stuff. But anyway, that's the Durflinger there. Uh, should build into something really nice. It's a very long, thin ship. Um, but there's so many things I would have to learn to build this, and not uh, not at the least, which is going to be actually putting it in some water. Uh, unless I just cheese out and put it on a base and paint it blue or something. <laughs> uh, but anyway, that's a little quick look at the Durflinger. I'll show the uh, the Ayanami in another video, and uh, I'm not going to do a super sprue view on that one either. I'll just show the basics of what's in it and kind of just what it looks like inside the box like it did there but anyway thanks for watching and